Hi everyone and welcome along. It's New Year's Eve and so with thoughts turning towards the new year, I thought we'd get back to a bit of flower painting and I've chosen the snowdrop because the snowdrop is the flower that I think of new life and new growth and gets me all excited for the prospect of a new year. So grab your paints and let's get started. We're back painting flowers, yay! Oh, I've got a bit of glitter on my page, a <laughs> little hangover from Christmas. Right, so we're going to do some snowdrops and I'm going to paint uh, maybe a little cluster of them. So I'm going to begin by just drawing in stems. There we go, I have one there. Let's just have two, that sounds nice. Okay, so two curves and that is me done with the pencil because they are very delicate, they're simple little flowers, very sweet and we see them appearing in the sort of transition from winter to spring. I've got some sap green here and I've also got some green gold below which I've just woken up. I have a size 2 brush which seems nice for the stem and I'm going to start off by painting um, sort of about, it's about three quarters, four fifths of the way up the stem. Because from that point, the stem sort of changes a little bit. So I'm just going to paint in a little bit of fluff. It's always a bit of fluff on my brush. Okay. And I'm just going to sort of leave it, leave a tiny weeny bit of space there that we can come back and sort out. And the top of the stem has got a bit of a sort of, uh, a bit of an abrupt stop like that. And then with a slightly smaller brush, I've got a three tenths here, I'm going to wake up my green gold, just add it to my sap green a little bit just to get a slightly different colour. And the sort of stem then turns into this little sort of loop as the snowdrop flower curls away from the stem. The stem sort of keeps going to the sun. So I'm just dropping in a tiny bit more sap green at the top there. And then we have a little curly curve where our snowdrop flower is going to droop. So let's do that again on this one. So from this side, I'm gonna have a slight droop on this little looped hood here. And then a sort of sap green loop that comes right back to there. Lovely. Then the little sort of well it's not a well it's a sort of sepal, it's the little cap where the petals are going to protrude from. So we just need a little sort of dome for both of them there. And again, I'm just going to drop in a little bit more sap green. And that one, you can just reshape it a little bit more. And at this point, I'm now just going to spend a bit of time just dropping in a little bit more sap green in places whilst I just wait for those little caps to dry. And then at the base we have some beautiful little leaves that we can get the green gold and sap green involved and with a fairly large brush a size 4 I'm going to just use the roundness of the brush to give these lovely sort of gently curved 
leaves. Now we want them to have a sort of soft tip like that, a nice rounded tip. So if you're not yet at the point where just being able to get that with the brush itself, you can then just round it off like that. So we'll just add a few more in. Now you can either choose to sort of start them at the end there or start them at the base down to you, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to drop in a little bit more sap green. Okay, this is looking really nice. Now it's time to look at our white snowdrop petals. Now white flowers, um, white petals is something we've looked at a few times. It's all about creating a most dilute sort of shadowy colour that takes in a tiny bit of the sort of the general colours on the page. So we've got a lot of greeny yellow colours. So what I'm doing is I've got a bit of, well this is extremely dilute burnt sienna and extremely dilute French ultramarine and then I've just brought in some of the very dilute sap green and green gold and that has created us a colour that will work really nicely for our petals. Okay, so I am going to now have a go at painting in one of these petals by doing a fairly similar shape to the leaves we were doing there, a nice rounded point. Now we could go even lighter, I think, so I'm going to take even less colour because what happens when you paint in a very dilute colour, it dries and the tiny bit of pigment there is already on the page will flood to the edges of that shape that you've created with your water and will create a beautiful sort of crisp papery edged white petal. My aim is to make sure they don't touch for this moment here and I'm going to paint in another one here. So starting with the point of the brush and then pressing it down getting a nice rounded tip. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to even see what you're doing, but if you just sort of angle your head a bit and you'll suddenly see it all come clear in the light. Try not to stick your hand in any other wet paint like I always have a habit of doing. Lovely. Okay, so we've now got some sort of wet paint drying here, wet paint drying there. We're going to allow it to just sort of gradually dry, but what I can do with a clean wet brush here is I can just come in whilst it's still drying and just get it even closer in. Just get it just touching the edge of the the top of the green there and just smoothing out the shapes. That's the cool thing. I think the sensible thing is to do it with the big brush, which means you get that shape done in as few brush strokes as possible. And then whilst it's still wet, you can just come in and neaten it up. And then what's nice, yes, that's what I was hoping for. You can get the tiniest bit of green just poking down from that little cup at the top. Now, whilst everything's drying, I'm going to mix a little bit of a shadow mix that I like to use. Excuse my printer there, just in the corner of the studio making a noise. I've got a bit of Prussian blue here and I'm going to get some burnt sienna. Now, Prussian blue is the, is the blue that I like to use when I'm working with plants, when I'm working with lots of green tones because for a shadow colour, 
it suddenly sort of takes on a rather greeny, bluey grey, uh, as opposed to French ultramarine, which is a fantastic blue for doing shadows in uh, sort of buildings, other things that aren't plants and things. Anyway, so I've got a nice bit of plant shadow, I suppose, what I'll call it. And now I'm just going to go round with my small brush and start to just neaten up a few little bits, adding a little bit of shadow to the stems, whilst also just neatening up the edges. Side there and just getting the tiniest bit creeping down which I'm rather pleased about all these tiny little extra bits go a long way to making what is a rather loose watercolor painting just a bit more detailed and here I'm just filling in a little bit of extra stem where we had left it because it is the one that's behind so filling it in with a bit of shadow seems to work rather nicely. And that's looking rather lovely. Now these leaves at the bottom we can just do a little bit more for them. What I'm going to start off with is getting a bit of sap green and mixing that into the shadow so we've got now gone even greener with our shadow. Some of these leaves are still a little bit damp that's fine. What I'm going to do is just use the shadow colour to give them just a little bit more interest. And what's nice is it will sort of appear in different ways depending on how wet or dry they are. You could wait for them all to dry fully, but I quite like, for the sake of this video, experimenting for you. And there we have a simple little set of snowdrops. Thanks so much for watching and I wish you a very happy new year and thank you so much for your support since joining YouTube in April of this year we've had the most amazing time and I can't wait to see how we get on in the new year. Um, but I want to say a big thank you to my patrons too for all your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy and if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on and of course if you subscribe then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!